Hey there guys, I'm back to another game review. Today we're taking a look at Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga on the PlayStation 5. TT Games have been making Lego games since 2005. Heck, they only made Lego games starting in 2009 and haven't made anything else since. I played the first Lego Star Wars game when I was a kid and I loved it. Me and my brother would wake up every morning until we 100% of the game. This was my first time I finished a game completely. Over the years, I would continue to play the Lego games as my brother fell out of love for them. I would play the next Lego Star Wars game, the Indiana Jones one, and lastly, the Lego Batman game. This is my introduction to these IPs and I still haven't watched a single Indiana Jones movie. When the gameplay overview trailer came out, I was really surprised by how good LEGO Star Wars of Skywalker Saga looked. This game culminated everything the LEGO games have been over the years while enhancing the gameplay tenfold. The visuals, the voice acting, and the funnier recreations of the source material. They introduced new gameplay mechanics while keeping the same lighthearted spirit in retelling the Star Wars movies. On that same day, however, Polygon released an article detailing the harsh work environment the team faced. This game has been in development since 2017 before the rise of skywalker even came out crunch culture took its place at tc games where overtime was expected strive for 85 became a phrase and new mechanics were requested randomly despite this new story i was conflicted as to whether i should pick the game up or not while i do not support game crunch i also don't want the efforts of the development team to go to waste it's not their fault management crunched the schedule so much that they were forced to work in those conditions the game released to many fans happy with the experience users on twitter found the combo feature to be really amusing because it's a lego game and the comment shouldn't be this in depth but it is after finishing all nine episodes of the skywalker saga what are my thoughts on this newest lego game Story-wise, it's a goofy retelling of the Star Wars movies. The first LEGO Star Wars game came out in 2005 was actually how I learned about Star Wars. It was when I was like 7 or 8 at the time, so cut me some slack. I've obviously watched the movies now, but it's been years since I've watched the prequels and the original trilogy. The Disney trilogy is more fresh in my mind because I still remember seeing those movies in theaters. CT Games nails it once again with the jokes and parodying of the movies. I would laugh a couple of times throughout each episode and found the riffing of the movies to be amusing. I was most intrigued about the Disney trilogy because I haven't seen those movies get parodied in Lego form and I was not disappointed. No matter how much you enjoy the Star Wars movies, you have to admit their silly nature and their intention to sell toys. I mean, look at the Mandalorian. Baby Yoda merchandise is everywhere, but I digress. Now, would I recommend Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga as a way to introduce kids to Star Wars? Sure. Why not? The source material is obviously more serious in its storytelling, but you get the gist of the movies here. TC Games does a fantastic job once again, making fun of the Star Wars story. The gameplay for this game is out of this world. The game size itself is massive. You're exploring everything Star Wars has to offer in the galaxy and beyond. Planets are fully explorable and act as a mini sandbox hub, traveling from planet to planet to complete missions and find collectibles. Unlike any previous LEGO game, the game's combat system has been expanded from just mashing the square button. The combo system allows players to juggle their enemies in the air and have more fun while fighting. It's clearly better for the Jedi since you could use the force to toss enemies around, but being able to mash different buttons during combat lets the player be more creative. Some people will still mash the square button, which is a feasible way to deal with enemies, but I appreciate this really unnecessary combo system for a LEGO Star Wars game. You can also throw your lightsaber, which is helpful, especially during boss fights. You'll occasionally have to solve puzzles, build objects, or control a ship. The puzzles are pretty simple, coming from a 23-year-old playing a children's game. Most of them involve lining up the pattern or memorizing a button combination. Nothing crazy, but good puzzles for kids to use their brain on. You'll build objects to advance to the next part of the game. It can be a ladder or a weapon to clear a pathway. Honestly, I wish building happened more because it is a Lego game. It used to be a larger part of the game from what I can remember, but it happens only a couple times in each episode. You'll occasionally rebuild barriers to hide behind them, but I never use them. The cover system in this game, while neat, isn't necessary. I can just run around and shoot my enemies just fine
behind without taking cover. Shooting, by the way, having a whole over the shoulder point of view when aiming down sight is cool as hell. For kids, this must be awesome and could introduce them to shooters in the future. If taking cover was mandatory, the game would be way too hard and tedious during shootouts. The parts of the game where you control a ship or a vehicle is really fun. My favorite section by far is the X Wing fight where you have to destroy the Death Star. Even piloting the Millennium Falcon is a blast as well. Switching between characters has become more streamlined. Instead of mashing L1 or R1 to get to the character you desire, you can actually use the D-pad to scroll through the characters and select the one you want. This is really helpful in certain episodes where you have a party of like larger than five people. I didn't discover this feature until episode 9, so I thought I'd share this feature in this review. Quality of life changes is all I'm asking for in these LEGO games. The camera is still a bit wonky in certain areas. The platforming isn't the sharpest, which can lead to missed jumps. I'm not sure how co-op works in this game, but it seems like the same from previous installments. I'm glad they got rid of the whole screen twisting as players got further from each other. It gave me a headache playing the LEGO Marvel games. Because the worlds are so much bigger, that type of split screen just would not work. Each player gets half of the screen with their own minimap. I'm sure combining the minimaps together would would have got confusing especially if the players got really far from one another there's still no online co-op which is a shame the collectibles and completionist bar has been set extremely high so high i feel like less than one percent of players will have finished lego star wars the skywalker saga 100 there are literally thousands of collectibles to find it and obtain kyber bricks mini kits characters true jedi completion you're going to get your bang for your buck if you decide to 100 it it will take over 80 hours but a game well worth 60 dollars if you finish at 100 free play is really important to those completionists as you'll have access to all the characters and be able to switch to whichever ones you want on the fly overall the gameplay for lego star wars the skywalker saga is great the new combat system is a welcome addition for the series the ship slash vehicle missions are a ton of fun while i would have liked more quality of life changes like a better camera and platforming mechanics the gameplay is the best we've seen in a lego game so far and it's going to be tough for tt games to surpass themselves in future titles Presentation wise, it's the best looking LEGO game so far. The characters are actually LEGO pieces as you'll see the imprints of the LEGO stamp on their arm. The lighting and visual effects are amazing, showing how far the devs have come since 2005. Not just an improvement from their start, but also comparatively to recent LEGO games like LEGO Avengers and such. They spent a ton of time making sure the game looked the best in the series so far, and it is. The voice acting surprised me by how good it was. I'm not used to LEGO characters talking in my games but i liked it here some characters don't sound like their movie counterparts but i really enjoyed the delivery of the lines playing to the silly nature of these games you get a lot more of the story when the characters can actually talk mumble mode is an option where the characters will literally mumble their way through dialogue i'm not a fan of this mode because you have to read the subtitles it would have been cool if there were no subtitles and they acted the scenes out more like charades obviously it would have required more development time because now you have to create separate cut scenes for this optional mode a nice throwback feature but not to my style i did run into one glitch where i had to restart the game i landed on a planet and i just kept infinitely falling it was a one-time occurrence but i thought i mentioned it anyway all in all, LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga is a phenomenal LEGO game. Massive planets to explore, an insane combo system, fantastic presentation, and an overall fun time for any Star Wars fan. It's by far the longest one yet with all 9 episodes of The Skywalker Saga. Each episode takes an hour or two to finish from beginning to end. There are way too many collectibles on each planet, so don't stress the collectibles on your first playthrough. The lighthearted storytelling is still here and should make any Star Wars fan laugh. Not everything is here that the fans would have liked, such as online play, but the combo system is a crazy fun addition. The presentation is spot on, superb lighting and visuals with clean performances by the voice actors. If you're a fan of Star Wars, you probably already picked this game up. It's a ton of fun with its humor and should be a good time all around. Normally, I would wait for LEGO games to go on sale if I had any interest in them, but for LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga, I could recommend it at its full price of $60. You're guaranteed to get plus 10 hours of enjoyment if you finish all the episodes, more hours can be clocked in if you explore the planets and collect everything. This is the biggest LEGO game ever, and it's also the best one too. 
So that is my review for Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys have not already, you can subscribe. I put new videos up on Saturdays. You can follow me on social media, Facebook and Twitter. Try to put updates for my future videos. Check out my podcast at anchor.fm slash Travis Damien Podcast. Talk about games, movies, and anime every other week. And yeah, that is all I have for today. Thank you guys for watching this video once again. I'll see you guys next time with more videos.